are moving to the fourth presentation and I will uh, just briefly present it. Um, so the title of this presentation is Equitable Access Using Metadata to Level the Playing Field in a Multilingual Country, which will be given by Ahava Cohen of the National Library of Israel. So welcome. Thank you. Let me just share my screen. Okay. And now for something a little different. I'm here today to present, obviously, but also to learn from you. Let me explain. Like many other countries, Israel's a multicultural and multilingual society. We're so diverse that while we have a dominant native language, we don't have one that's a majority. According to the last government social survey of Israelis over 20 years of age, only 49% report Hebrew as their native language, another 18% say it's Arabic, 15% Russian, and the rest is a scattering of different languages with only 2% or under of the population. The multilingual nature of Israeli society is reflected in our publications. This graphic is from 2015, but the numbers don't change that much from year to year. Of the 8,225 mandatory deposit books which arrived in 2019, there were slightly more Hebrew, up to 91%, slightly fewer English, down to 5%, Arabic went down to 2.5%, and a lot fewer in Russian, only 1%. To provide each reader their book and each book its reader, we in Israel catalog in four separate languages. All resources in Hebrew script, such as Hebrew, Yiddish, Ladino, and various dialects of Judeo-Arabic are cataloged in Hebrew. Resources in Arabic scripts, such as Arabic, Persian, some Urdu, some Turkish, are cataloged in Arabic. Resources in Cyrillic scripts, such as Russian and Ukrainian, are cataloged in Russian, and pretty much everything else is cataloged in English. Here you see three different manifestations of a David Grossman book, Susechad Nechnas Lebal, the original Hebrew, a Russian translation, and an English translation. And each is cataloged in a different language. People, of course, are different. They aren't born in any specific language, so we can't catalog them in any specific language. That means their authority records can't be in one language. The Israel National Authority file, Mazal, Magal Zuyot Lumi, is the product of work by 20 academic, public, and special libraries, and it encompasses headings for people, corporate bodies, subjects, and places. It's fully multilingual in a way which allows each heading to be used separately in bibliographic records, but retrieved in search jointly, and I'll explain how in just a little bit. Aside from a few English language records, all bibliographic and authority records are handcrafted. Thousands and thousands of records every month. That's a lot of work. Why do we do it? We believe it creates more equitable metadata than that which is found in most other countries, and equitable metadata leads to improved access. How so? Israeli patrons come from a variety of backgrounds and the National Library of Israel, which functions as a combination of a national library, a public library, and a school library, can expect that our readers know any language other than their own, and that they would feel comfortable with a foreign language keyboard. The way we build our metadata allows patrons to access the variety of the library's collections using their own preferred language. Resources can be found in the language of publication, and a search based on authority controlled fields from any one language will lead to all the resources in all the other languages combined. But of course, we can't forget our other big patron base, which is librarians in Israel and around the world. Many English records, both bibliographic and authority, are downloaded from OCLC, so it's important that we work with international standards and international terms. But the other three languages are, as I said before, handcrafted. We're working hard to eliminate, to decolonize and deassimilate our metadata and allow each culture to conform to its own norms. But we're basing ourselves on international standards 
and data dictionaries to give us a common vocabulary with which to discuss our varying needs. There are biases built into our system which are very hard to overcome. The leg legacy of Anglo-Americanism and cataloging rules, which the RDA Steering Committee is right now actively trying to work on, and the philosophical bent of Mark, which is reflected in its determination of which metadata is non-repeatable because it's the absolute truth and its determination that certain fields are regular and other fields are variants or alternates, even though the metadata is equivalent. We used to buy into the systematic bias. Here you see a library cataloging card, which only allowed limited access to the resource because the heading, what the people would see as they went through the card catalog, is in English, even though all the metadata and the resource itself is in Hebrew. We're looking for active ways to work around that bias. And the main way we're doing it is by cataloging in the four languages, and especially by enriching the metadata with multiple truths, such as the person's name, which is equally accessible for retrieval in all the forms they use. Here you see lots and lots of 100s that are pulled out of the authority database to allow retrieval. When we're forced by international standards to show bias, such as determining one regular title, one 245, and an alternate, we base our decision on the prevalence of languages in the country. Thus, this book, which is bilingual Hebrew English, was cataloged in Hebrew with the English title relegated to an added title because 49% of Israelis are native language Hebrew speakers. There's no romanization in our record because no one but metadata people speak romanization. Our authority records, as I said before, are built a little differently. In addition to multiple identifiers, which allow us to prepare for linked data, the Ex Libre software, Library Software Company and the National Library discovered that we could use a non-standard subfield nine to allow us to build four equivalent main headings. You see here there are four 100 fields, which Mark doesn't allow, but we do it anyway. None of these is the authorized heading and the other's variants. They're all authorized headings of equal importance. In the bib records, we use the heading that matches the script of the language of cataloging, but in retrieval, a user can search on any one of these headings and get to everything, even it was, if it was cataloged in a different language. A search on Amos O's using the Arabic form of his name will get you books in Hungarian, Swedish, Arabic, and according to the facets on the side, 138 resources in Hebrew, 108 in English, 45 in German, and more if you would expand the search. For authority file partner libraries in Aleph, the, the story ends here. But what you can see is as we're cataloging, you see here the authorities. When we catalog in English, it pulls in the 100 in the Latin character form. When we catalog in Russian, it pulls in the second 100, which is the Cyrillic character form. The Hebrew pulls in the Hebrew character form, and the Arabic pulls in the Arabic character form. The public only sees what they want to see, the information in their preferred language or the language of the resource. But behind the scenes, the Primo discovery layer is enriching the content with all the diverse metadata we fed it from our authority records, all of those 100s that you see, which are both the authorized access points in the four scripts and some of the variant access points in those four scripts. We've made this work in a Mark 21 environment, and it works for anyone who uses Ex Libris's Alma. And here's where I come to learn from you. What are we going to do post Mark? I have to admit, I don't know. The act of co-location needs to be solved. Data sources already being touted as the future of linked data, such as Wikidata, do feature multilingual capabilities, but using them is a different matter. To reconcile multilingual metadata against Wikidata, you have to run separate API search reconciliation searches against each and every language. 
So the multilingual metadata is there, but it's not truly interchangeable. On the other hand, services like the Library of Congress's linked data services use a single URI for all languages. It's logical. Library of Congress says that the Romanized form is the authorized access point and everything else, his name in Hebrew, in Arabic, in Chinese, in Japanese, are all variants. But to do something like we do, where the catalogers use one form of the name, but the public can use any form of the name to get to everything, I don't see how it can be done using Wikidata, which makes you divide things up, or Library of Congress, which puts everything together into one bundle that can't then be separated out. Once we've moved on from Mark, how will we in Israel be able to at the same time allow patrons to unify their searches and obtain results from all languages, but allow librarians to specify the one heading that they want from that whole bundle? I haven't seen anyone try to tackle this idea of separation at the same time as unification, but I think it'll be fascinating to watch the process when it does begin. If any of you have any ideas, I would love to hear them now or contact me later. I think this could be mind blowing and uh, thank you for listening. Thank you, Ahala, for uh, this presentation and uh, promoting multilingual search and um, equal representation going away from uh, colonialism and, and so forth. And uh, thank you for opening also the floor for uh, comments and questions. Um, special thanks for everybody for keeping to the time. So now we have plenty left for uh, questions. As uh, announced earlier, um, the way this Zoom is structured is that you can post your questions in the chat window and I will read them out uh, to the panelists. The panelists are also, of course, most welcome to ask questions or if somebody has a direct nice response to Ahava, <laughs> please do go ahead. So the floor is everybody's now. While waiting, uh, Hava, I, I'm, I also teach students about the yeah, wonderful Library of Congress authority services. And um, I like to tell them that once we have all the data structured in formats such as uh, RDF and, and other carrier formats, it should be able to do things. However, there is always this problem that um, only one is the, author, the authorized form and others are considered variants. And um, I, I do hope that there still is a way to extract them as authority, authorized variants, um, depending on the country of origin. And maybe we then need parallel authority files uh, and uh, linked data services to allow for that. Even country of origin might not be enough because if you have an Arab author from Israel, you wouldn't want necessarily to use the Hebrew form of his name. You'd want to use the Arabic because that's his native language. There is other information in the authority files that might help, but I'm not quite sure how we're going to tease it out. I'm actually sometimes taught, I help out with Ex Libris, and that's one of the topics that I'm going to be bringing up. We have a meeting next week about linked data, that that's something we're going to need to look at is we know how to bring in this information. How do you sift through all of it to only use the parts that you want in one context and to use all of the metadata in another context that uses the same authority file? Right, right. Well, uh, hopefully this will be sorted out and should also be reflected, in my opinion, in international standards, although Mark 21 is, 
yeah, the, the US version, it, it's used so widely that um, there, there should be accommodations for handling these issues um, as well. Um, moving on to the question from the audience, um, uh, thanking for the interesting presentations. There is a question about the federated search in the first talk. So about the Shanghai Library. Um, the question is whether this only uses Sparkle via Virtuoso or are other indices included like Elasticsearch to speed things up? In other words, did you encounter performance issues or bottlenecks? Uh, yeah, yes, of course. Uh, uh, can, you, can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Of course, uh, we use Elasticsearch uh, for every single knowledge base and uh, provide APIs uh, for the federal search engine. Yeah, uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Um, uh, because uh, the RDF data is stored in the opening what. Um, we can't hear you now, I think. We lost your audio. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes, it's yes. back. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, uh, sorry. Um, as you see, uh, this uh, image, can you, can you see my uh, screen? Yes, you can. Uh, yes, yes. Um, uh, because uh, every knowledge base uh, is based on link open data and the RDF data is stored in open link Vertoso and uh, Vertoso provides uh, a Sparkle endpoint. Uh, uh, so we uh, develop some APIs uh, based on the Sparkle endpoint um, and uh, the and also uh, the RDF data uh, uh, has been transformed into uh, elast elast search index data, and uh, the uh, Fedora search engine uh, uh, ser uh, search search data through the APIs provided by this elast search index. Yeah. Uh, we uh, don't um, we don't develop APIs uh, directly through Spark endpoint, uh, and uh, uh, the data become index data uh, in the Elasticsearch, and the Elasticsearch provide APIs for the uh, federal search engine. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah for uh, clarifying and uh, repeating uh, some of the things that you have mentioned earlier as well. Um, now that we're talking to you, I also have um, a question. So I was very impressed with um, everything, all the services that you have developed. I think it's a wonderful comprehensive example of the services that the library can offer um, in the context of digital humanities and, and citizen science. And especially, I was curious about the SNS, GIS, and text analysis services. Um, while a lot of the things that we hear about are mostly development, I was wondering whether um, you have any plans to conduct evaluation with um, either digital humanities researchers or uh, general public end users and they are, yeah, how, how they think these services are um, relevant to them or, or usable, what is the update, uptake um, and so forth. Uh, uh, good question. Um... Uh, all the digital humanities systems uh, we developed in the uh, past few years uh, had the surveys to the public users and the researchers uh, and um, public public uh, users may uh, don't want the uh, research 
research tools uh, for the researchers. So uh, we provide we provide uh, uh, different surveys for different kinds of users, uh, the, uh, such as the P, uh, PDF PDF image for the public servers and the trip IF. Uh, uh, display displaying the images for the researchers so the researchers can uh, make annotations on the images uh, and the uh, uh, GIS GIS uh, displaying uh, is just for uh, the researchers uh, and the public users in different application scenarios uh, uh, the uh, text anal analysis uh, is just for the researchers and the public uh, the public users don't want this kind of tools yeah okay thank you okay. thank you um you're welcome thank you and and then um maybe for um the second and third presentation or everybody even everybody mentioned rdf um, to some degree and um, we are all uh, developing solutions based on rdf uh, but then there is still a problem on how to um, search on rdf especially for lay people who are not familiar with sparkle um, I, I wonder in the in the future, perhaps in the distant future, whether there are any plans to implement services and evaluation where anybody could could search on RDF data that would be um, a well accepted solution, like an interface that would be easily used by everybody. Um, do you have any experience or any plans for uh, such interfaces in general? So this is basically for everybody. If anybody has a comment on that. So maybe just to rephrase, um, I was wondering whether um, any end users can be involved in creating user-friendly interfaces when querying RDF documents or data? Uh, hello, hello. Uh, this is Tomoko Okuda uh, from National Di Library. Uh, uh, do you hear me? Yes, welcome. Uh, in Japan search, uh, we really want uh, uh, everybody to use Sparkle uh, to use our data. So we actually uh, provide an easy Sparkle interface, uh, which makes it easier to um, use Sparkle through browser. Um, and I myself was um, not really specialist with a Sparkle language, but the, the interface actually helped uh to me to understand and uh, um together with the data model which is a very easy to understand um i feel like uh the use of uh rdf data through gps is uh slowly uh increasing that's my comment thank you thank you very much um we now have two more questions one is um, I assume for the first talk, um, but please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, can you tell something more about how you use spatial information like place of publication or what role visualization of spatial information plays in your projects? Uh, is this Hello? a question for me? the first presentation i would assume so um but yeah uh, please please correct if if this is a wrong assumption 
maybe maybe in the first two um, presentations because both use visualization. But but um, please go ahead, um, Said Sichuan, and then maybe okay okay Yao Xiaoying uh, could also comment. Uh, okay. Yes, can you hear me? Oh. Uh. <laughs> yes, we can hear you now. Uh, let's uh, see what uh, Said Sichuan. Uh, I'm Xiao Sichuan. Uh, uh, I will uh, talk about something uh, about this question uh, and. Uh, uh, the spatial information, uh, like space, uh, like place of publication, uh, help us uh, help us display the uh, uh, data on 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 the map, and uh, uh, it help users to uh, explore the uh, collection of uh, uh, Shanghai Library uh, based on the public public publication places on, on a map uh, because the uh, collection of uh, Shanghai library is uh, very very big and uh, the data uh, so and so much data you cannot uh, you, you cannot uh, search uh, or uh, read it one by one but you can uh, you can you can uh, display so much data on one map uh, because of uh, the uh, place uh, spatial information uh, about the publication place or the uh, 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 or the uh, other library other libraries or uh, museums or uh, archives uh, uh, location can uh, display on one map and the realization Realization technologies also helps people uh, and the users uh, explore the big data uh, on one map. Yeah. Thank you. And and maybe Zhou Xiaoying has um, some other examples on using uh, visualization of spatial information in your project, maybe related to the newspaper project. Yes. Um, yes, we have made some visualization projects, uh, just uh, such as based on the GRS timeline, or we will extract the entities from the full text and uh, make our own specific description model so that the relationship of the character or the relationship of the figures can be showed um, uh, as in a visualized way. Uh, also, we, we, we are trying to put forward a knowledge map. Uh, the knowledge is extracted from the text, uh, which, is, um, uh, which is OCR recognized uh, by the technology. And what's more, we, I think uh, in the future, we can have more visualization um, practice about the analysis of the data, uh, such as the um, analysis of the, tr uh, the trend of the hot pots and the subject links um, between the different uh, resources. Thank you. Thank you very much for commenting on that and explaining further. We then have two questions for Ahava. Um, Tom is suggesting the following. In the SCOS data model, each concept has one preferred label in each language used, but no particular language is considered to be inherently authoritative. In other words, one language may be considered authoritative in a given context, but such decisions are outside of the SCOS data model itself. So could a model like this meet your requirements? It definitely might. You've given me now homework to do before my next meeting with Ex Libris. Thank God I don't have to figure out how to implement something like that within Alma, since Ex Libris is trying to sell this sol multilingual solution to other national libraries. I'll read up on it and I might contact you, Tom, if I have questions. And then I can pass it over to Ex Libris and say, yeah, this looks like a good solution. Now figure out how to do it. I love passing the buck. 
<laughs> and then one more question uh, for you. Multilingual searches mainly depend on resource labels rather than resource identifiers, mostly supported through Wikidata APIs. I'm curious to know the challenges faced or anticipated in reconciling Wikidata entities for your use case. We have two main problems. One is a manpower problem because when we've worked with OpenRefine and reconciled uh, names against Wikidata, a lot of the suggestions aren't high quality. We need to have someone who can really understand the language to look at the Wikidata entity and see if it's what we mean. So we have to keep passing the projects back and forth between different departments in the library, between the department that handles Cyrillic characters, Hebrew cataloging, Arabic cataloging, and that makes everything take longer and be more prone to pitfalls. The other big challenge we have is the same challenge we have in our authority database and in VIAF. Information gets scattered. Someone opens up a Wikidata entity for a Russian author, not realizing that someone already opened that entity, but with his name only in Hebrew or only in English or only in Arabic. And we have to find all of those instances and put them together into a single entity. That's what we keep doing with the OCLC database that scatters people across different uh, authority records. VIAF does the same thing. We do it, unfortunately, now and then. And that's very hard to do. It's trying to find a needle in a haystack. And it needs, again, a lot of very knowledgeable people who both know how to work with Wikidata and with the various authority databases and understand the culture and literature and history of the things that we're trying to describe in Wikidata. And that's not an easy combination to find. Right. Um, if I may uh, continue this discussion, um, I was wondering whether you also do subject indexing, so assigning keywords from, say, a Library of Congress subject headings translated into different languages and, uh, or something else, and, and the yeah. challenges there, because that could be even more complex. Um, oh, yeah. Culture. Yeah, we do, we do subjects. It's based off of Library of Congress subject headings with translation into Hebrew and Arabic. We don't at this point translate subjects into Russian, but then you really start getting into sticky issues of culture and colonization and assimilation because what Library of Congress with its American bias thinks of Jewish, Muslim, Arabic, Israeli culture doesn't reflect what we think of ourselves. And there's always that tension of how far do you go to change things also, it's very important to remember that Library of Congress subject headings primarily are meant to serve the Library of Congress. So we may have tens of thousands of books on a subject that Library of Congress doesn't collect, and so they won't build a subject heading for that. So we even more have that conflict of we want to stay standardized so that we can talk with the rest of the world, but we more importantly need to describe our own cultures for our users. Indeed, uh, it's, um, I'm always sad to know that um, Library of Congress subject headings have become a, a de facto international standard, but they come from uh, completely different aims and purpose and, and therefore all these challenges uh, do come up. Um, so I, I wish you luck and I wish uh, <laughs> that you give us a good example next year on how you are addressing um, all these issues as well. I'm glad to. It's highly challenging, especially in, in your context. Um, okay, well, we, we still have um, more than 10 minutes left for any questions or comments and um, please um, use the floor while we have these wonderful examples.
Okay. Um, well, I'm, I'm curious then about um, interoperability problems that you have in, in your projects. We talked uh, with the Israeli National Library, but maybe in, in other countries, when it comes to merging together resources from different databases where each uses a different uh, subject knowledge organization system or a controlled vocabulary and mappings are often very challenging there as well and take a lot of time not the least because of the questions we've already mentioned but i wonder to what degree um, these were able to be addressed already now in your um, projects. So mappings between different controlled vocabularies or keywords coming from different databases and you want to allow cross search in integrated services. Uh. I can talk about a little about uh, this. If uh, if I uh, if a book has um, many keywords from different knowledge organization system, we just uh, re we just record all all keywords uh, and uh, 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 record the uh, source of knowledge. Uh, organization system, the keyword uh, come from. Yeah, we just record, we just accept all the keywords. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, yeah, I guess that's, that's a common way of, of doing thing also in, in discovery services, which bring together library catalog with academic journal articles and repositories. Um, that I have worked with um, and uh, yeah it, it's I, I see that it comes with problems because if something is not indexed in the same way or not at all because of a different indexing policy then it won't be found using the same uh, search term but uh, it's also very resource consuming to, to do all the mappings and we have one more question. It's wonderful to hear about all of these RDF and linked data applications. Is it becoming easier to find qualified people who have learned these technologies at university? I assume this is for all the panelists. What we're finding here in Israel is it's easier to find people who come from the computing side of the universe and then send them to library school to learn about metadata and patrons needs and all of that than it is to try to find librarians who even begin to understand the world of RDF and linked data. Um. If I may comment on that, uh, I work with digital humanists um, a lot and um, those who really need to learn um, about this so that they can access the data and do their research, they, they do. But in general, um, not, not quite <laughs> yeah, to answer that. And uh, as um, Okura and Yokota mentioned, there are interfaces like Easy Sparkle interface that makes um, querying on RDF uh, rather easy. It's still a learning curve. Um, so one, one I think needs to be motivated from what I have seen in, in Sweden at least and Europe. And um, we still have problems with students knowing how to use Boolean operators in advanced search interfaces. So this being a step further, I think is directly linked to, to motivation for 
from my own experience. You know, um, yeah, uh, finding the um, qualified people is quite a um, big problem in Japan too. Um, also, uh, when we are tr handling uh, data from um, heterogeneous sources, we have to um, think how to convert them uh, data set by data set. So, um, without our without a fixed policy, um, the, the changing process can be easily, um, well, can easily change it without, uh, in an unpredictable way. So find out good people and uh, 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 we, the librarians, librarians have to work with them. Uh, that's very important, I think. Mm. And, and we, the National Library is always um, seeking the cooperation with the professional companies so that we can work together to make the transition uh, from the different uh, metadata or, and, and the library will put forward the specific model or the ontology model so that um, and the professional companies will give some plans or and do some practice work. And what's more, we are, uh, we are also building, building some sharing platform and the registration systems for metadata so that the metadata in different, um, different uh, in uh, the different metadata can come together and integrate so that it will be more easy to be operate together. And we can, um, we can work towards the copyright issues or the multilingual issues and as as uh, all the metadata come together so that uh, we can find a more general uh, general um, model to solve the differences right okay wow well. Another question, what tools are used for data cleaning and entity reconciliation? Are you able to elaborate on the workflow? At which point, which platform is the reconciliation carried out? At a single point or at multiple points in the process? Hello, uh, we use we used open refine open refine and uh, 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 we developed some uh, RD, rdb to rdf tools and uh, uh, extract uh, trans transform and uh, load uh, tools uh, for uh, for gathering data from the web and uh, cleaning them uh, and uh, do some uh, entity recognition uh, by myself, by, by ourselves. And uh, mm, we, we just developed the many tools uh, by ourselves and uh, don't uh, use any open source uh, to us, just open refine. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Well, we, we have a, a few minutes for um, one or two last questions or comments. Well, I would like to see um, a nice um, anthology that brings together all the best practices papers, um, perhaps something to, to think about if others agree. It would be really nice to show your examples to um, other related institutions of what could be done and what challenges you were faced with and, and opportunities that it provides and so on. Just a comment.
And there will always be a challenge of uh, training <laughs> digital humanists or um, anybody else who wants to work with um, RDF and, and Sparkle. It, it's the discussion on the chat. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, um, if there are no more questions, I think we have had a, a long and fruitful discussion. Thanks to the presenters uh, who, who kept uh, their time very well. Thank you all uh, for coming here, for taking the time out of your schedule to show us your wonderful projects. And thank you to all DCMI uh, participants. Um, the conference will go on um, this week and next week as well. And I hope to see you all and hope that you enjoy the remainder of the conference. So thank you very much for today and this session.